Hey, we go back again with another video and today we're just going to summarize the whole Northeast Derby experience. So after a disappointing result, we can clearly see there's a massive gulf between the two teams. And of course, you can, what I noticed about Newcastle players was that everybody seemed to be know exactly where every other player was. The team was well drilled. You know, they were all working for each other, pulling, on, pulling in the same direction. And as you can see, the different level, the different class from Sunderland to, to Newcastle altogether. You know, just the different, the gulf is massive. You can see they're worth a lot of money, them players. They do put a shift in. They all know exactly where every other member of the team was. So the, so the, 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 the possession, it was quick, it was fluent, it was fast flown. And, and we, really we, really, we really sort of struggled with the intensity of the high press and, and how fast they play the football. And we didn't have the time really on the ball that we thought we could have the time on the ball because it's a different class. And these young players of Sunderland will learn, touch wood, some of them will learn and hopefully will grow as the season goes on. I know all Sunderland fans out there are disappointed. It's a, it's a frosty cold day at the day and, and it's the first bit of exercise I've done for a few days. So I'm pleased to get out there this morning and have a bit, a bit of a walk and a bit of a chill and just, you know, get the legs stretched out a little bit. <sighs> what a day. But yes, so that after yesterday's result, you can say we're all disappointed. Beal said there's 20 games still to go for the lads to learn and bounce back for the rest of the season. Well, well, well so we'll give, for me, let's see what Beal can do with this team, this young squad between now and the end of the season. Let's see if the young players learn, bounce back. The likes of Equa, who made that silly mistake in defence, trying to beat his man in the penalty box, you know... Players like Equa hopefully will learn from their mistakes and will grow as players. And the whole experience for yesterday, for the lads, hopefully they'll all, you know, even though they'll be disappointed. I thought Ballard, you know, again, he's one of the better players on our side. And like someone said, I didn't realise at the time, if Ballard hadn't sort of got that own goal, Isaac may have gotten a hat-trick because he was right behind him, wasn't he? So, you know, he did try his best to, to clear it and it happens, it happens, you know, under intense pressure from that sort of good quality outfit of Newcastle. And the likes of Ballard give away a penalty as well, but for me, he's one of our better players and I'm sure he'll grow in stature. You know, he's a big lad. I'm sure he'll get better with more experience. And I hope Equa learns from his errors as well. Clark, you know, had a quiet game yesterday. Pritchard, when he got moved to the middle of the park, he was so much better. I think it was because Joe Lytton got taken off, so he had more space. And, and the interesting thing that Bale said, very interesting what Bale said, and I wonder if the owners listened to that. Bale said, something to do, I don't know exactly what the words were, but not having enough experience in the team, not have like enough, you know, people, only one person, we had that was Pritchard. I forget his exact words. Look back on his interview on ITV and he mentioned about not having enough experienced players. Now that's what we need to bring into this team. It's okay having loads of youngsters, but having one or two experienced players to actually be with the youngsters to help them grow and, and, and give them the experience and, and learn together. Is that what we need? That's what we need. Pritchard, yes, and maybe two more experienced players. Bring them in in the transfer window. And we can really push for promotion in the playoffs this season. Right, it's a bit cloudy down here today. If you're enjoying this video at the moment, please subscribe the channel and give us the thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah, Bale's interview, he does talk a good talk, doesn't he? Let's see if he walks the walk. Yesterday, I was disappointed in not making many substitutions. I thought we could have brought on one or two more substitutions because the deal could have come on. You know, he could have maybe given it a go. So I'm disappointed only the one substitution in bar. But I think he thought maybe the team could snatch a goal and get back into the game because, you know, like say Pritchard, once he was moved to the middle, was so much better. And so I made a comment to do with the likes of Ekwa when he gave the ball away in the box and how Newcastle recycled the ball and worked as a team. Now, if that was Roberts where Almiron was, would Roberts have passed to our striker or would he have gone for goal himself? That's where we maybe need to be more of a team and work for each other. And we need to, our players wanted too much time on the ball. And the same did not know where other players were on the pitch and the decision making was slow. So that's one of the things hopefully we'll grow and learn from the whole situation is our players work rate can be faster. They've got to be able to sort of recycle the ball quicker, pass the ball faster. Like the drills and training when they're doing the quick one-two passes. That's what we need, a quicker passing 
free-flowing football rather than a bit, a bit dilly-dallying on the ball, wanting a bit too much time. So, you know, playing against this high-quality Newcastle side, that's where we've got to learn. That is the gulf, that is the difference. That is where they've got to try and bridge that gap. And being young players, some of them might, and some of them, of course, won't. Hopefully they all will, but, you know, there's also going to be players that will never bridge that gap. And, yeah, which players do you think can bridge that gap from Sunderland? You know, after watching yesterday, is there any of those players that can do? Ballard, yes, of course, I'm sure he could bridge the gap at some point. Is, is our midfield a bit too nice and too and weak? And do we need someone with a bit of experience, a bit of bite in our midfield as well? Also, I want to give a big shout out to the Wheatley Hill lads met yesterday. Hard lines with the results, but it was great meeting you. Hopefully, we can still get in the playoffs this season. And even a chance of promotion. <laughs> with a bit of investment. Also, yesterday I noticed Ruchin didn't get much service up top. So I think we need a target man. We need someone with a bit more height. Because if we can't do that, you know, passing out from the back and we get caught out. And we want to go long. We went long a few times yesterday and we had no chance of winning the ball. Upper height, we're just rooshing up there. We had no height whatsoever. So yes, a target man could be maybe somebody we can bring in in the transfer window as well. And as for Newcastle, they're a good team, obviously. Do I want them to win the FA Cup? No, of course I do not want them to win a cup. Of course I don't. End of the day, why would I? But, you know, they were the better side by a mile yesterday. Oh, hands are numb. So yes, summarise the whole thing. It's one of those things, isn't it? We played against a much better team, much better squad. We have to learn our lessons, you know, sort of recover, get over it. Put it behind us, put it at bed now. It's one of those things. We all wanted them to win the Wigan Italian derby, win the North East derby. But this moment in time, the gulf is just too big. The gap's too big. And I'm sure at some point, hopefully touch wood, you know, we will close the gap eventually. I don't know if we ever will, though. It's a thing. Under this regime, not sure, but it is what it is. We have to get behind the players, get behind Beal for the last 20 games of the season, like he keeps on saying. There's 20 games to go. He thinks we get to the playoffs. Let's see what they do in the transfer window. Let's see what they can provide Beal and these young lads in the transfer window, whether they bring some experienced players in, hopefully not just loans. I don't see the point in having loans. We've got to go up there, get one or two quality players in to help this young side come through and develop in to what, you know, the owners and Bale want. So there we go. We are disappointed, but we move on. The lads probably, you know, end of the day, the lads have learned a harsh lesson yesterday. It's, it's just the way. It's life, isn't it? It's life. We have to get over it. We'll get back on. Hopefully next weekend again, some switch will bounce back. Another difficult game, mind. And we'll all be behind the team, of course we are, because Sunderland fans like we always do. Right, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this quick summary. This thought I wanted to get this out of the way and just put this whole, the whole derby behind us now. And good luck to Sunderland for the rest of the season. And one last thing to prove I'm not a sore loser. Well done, Newcastle, and new result. Couple of bits of information from your source. Two scout reports have been in for Langstaff from Notts County. That's the striker who scored 60 odd goals in 71 games. Maybe it's, I don't think he's got the quality for the championship, but you never know. What's your thoughts on that? And also, a couple of League One and Two sides have inquired about Hamia potentially on loan in the last 24 hours. Well, maybe Hamia needs to go out and get some experience. What's your thoughts?